What is going on? You are watching and listening to Tags Live, aka Talk About Gay Sex, the live edition. I'm your host, Steve V, and this is episode 358 alongside Maurice Doggett. How the hell are you doing, Cody? Hello, darling. I'm doing wonderful this lovely evening. How are you? I'm really good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, you know, I'm good. We're going to get into it because there was some stuff oh. that happened today, oh. honey, child. <laughs> I'm happy people are trickling in because yes. to keep up with us on this show that we do, it's like we are all over the place. One minute I mean, we're on one minute we're on this get vocal, the next one we're on vocal, we're back on get vocal, we're getting hacked. It's just oh, we're nominated we're, we're nominated for uh, best sex podcast. I mean it's on and on. Uh, I'm pitching our TV pilot. It's it's a hot mess. It's a it's a hot mess. It's all but good and the it's best, life. In the best it's way. life. That's right. We do it. Yeah. We do it fantastic. And we are blessed and highly favored despite the H word. Okay. I like that. Yes. Um, all right. Well, so much to get into. I'm just going to start off, though, with this lovely t-shirt, We Save Balls. Ooh. Yeah. Manscaped. It's it's their initiative. Manscaped is our sponsor where you guys can get 20% off and free shipping by using our promo code TAGS, T-A-G-S, at checkout. Free mm -hmm. shipping, 20% off. Um, it's their initiative because it is Testicular Cancer Awareness Month, April is, and oh, they're encouraging everybody while you're getting ready for spring, while you're manscaping, and Manscaped really truly does have the best manscaping products. I can attest to it. I know you can as well. Yes. I'm talking about things Very like the, lawn, the Lawnmower 4.0 LED light. You can do it in the shower. It's waterproof, and you can trim away, but they've got other products that you, if you want to go even tighter you can do that and we like a good tighter shave some of us but they're encouraging everybody in their initiative we save balls and that's why i'm wearing this today that when you're in the shower guys just do a quick a check on your your that's yeah. when your balls are the most relaxed Ooh. and you can yeah i know <laughs> Feel around down there. Make sure you're feeling two balls, testes, and that there's nothing Ooh. else going on. And if you do feel something, a lump or a little bit of pain, don't. Oh. It doesn't mean you know. Don't. It's the time to just go get it checked out. When we yes. want. That's why we save balls is the initiative. So while you're manscaping, again, use our promo code T A G S and get twenty percent off plus free shipping. But check your balls while you're down there. So we love right. that. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, now love that. Um, so we were hacked, Cody. <laughs> I know, uh, girl. I need a sip of wine. Uh, me it's too. This, yeah, it's so frustrating to be hacked on Instagram, and we were, our Instagram account, I want to let everybody know listening and watching that if you get a DM from me asking, hey, how you doing, um, a, a, a pause, yeah. because they're waiting for you to respond, it's usually that kind of generic kind of response, do not respond, I'm not DMing, DMing anyone from Tags Podcast right now, I will let you know if I ever do. Um, typically we ask you to DM us for sex advice, but yes. that just do not respond to it. It's a hacker, sadly. And, um, it's just, you know, the, one of those things that they got a hold of our account and they're hacking us. So alert, alert tags, podcast, Instagram account has been hacked. I will report back if we, I've done everything you can do aside from pull out my hair to try and get the account back from instagram and we all know how that is you know you can't get an immediate response yeah. but wish us well because we really do use instagram to promote so many things on the show and you know we're the little guy here trying to make it here and it's just so frustrating to me when yeah. that happens and they're they're so lascivious those ones um they try to use you can though use our our my private um account which i'll be pro uh, posting all things tags out of right now. And that mm -hmm. is, I am Steve, I am underscore Steve V. Again, I am underscore Steve V. Yes. And that is the account that I'll be using right now in the meantime 
to maybe I'll just continue to use it. But in the meantime, for sure, that's where you can get updates on text podcasts and just go there. So yeah, it's just one of those things. So upsetting. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's just one of those things that, you know, when you're just trying to do the right thing and this just happens, it just so sucks. I don't know yeah. if it's related to the war in Ukraine or if it's just people that don't have time, you know, have more time on their hands than they know what to do with. The Russian but bots got us? Oh, no. It could be, you know, I don't know. But on a positive note, if okay. you didn't listen to Tuesday's episode, mm -hmm. we're nominated for Best <gasps> Sex Podcast for the Cyber Socket Awards. And we really want you to vote for us because that's how we can win. Yes. It's a great... Um, Great award show happening in West Hollywood in May. You have till May 5th to vote. Already and voted. okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> it's really easy. You can go to Cyber Socket Awards. That's uh, cybersocketawards.com and vote and vote for us. The good thing, a little thing on that too. It's a it's an extensive list of awards from like best top, best bottom, best duo. Um some great good of, yeah. yeah and then you get to us and we're best sex podcasts and we're it's under talk about gay sex now here's the thing if you don't know every category choose the ones you do know and you can a little tidbit here you can leave the rest blank so there were okay. some categories that i didn't really know and rather than just like when i go to the polls for you know, I'm voting for the for president. The I'm oh, voting for oh, Biden. Wait, <laughs> and then I'm like, who is this? What this category is this? I don't understand this. And I just, I, I don't know if you can in there, but I leave this blank if okay. you don't know. All right. Okay. You know, you didn't do there's some research. stuff that I didn't do See, my research. My research before I voted, I looked at each category and I said, oh my God, they're hot. Oh my God, this scene is the best. Give it to them because. But here, but there were some categories that were kind of challenging, like best film or best adult film of I watched 20. Them. Did you watch them? Bitch? <laughs> <laughs> I don't got time to watch those. I watched the preview. <laughs> Okay. Well, you're really good in Academy Award um, presenter here. I mean, you got to do your research, and this is the best research of all of all time. Cody, yes, it's cyber. Can you put it in there? It's I was just cyber socket. Cybersocketawards.com. Cybersocketawards.com. You do have to register. Again, you don't have to vote for every category if you don't know some of them. If you want to just go through there, do the ones you know and submit. We really appreciate it. And yes. we really want to win. It would mean a lot. So Damon asked, can we vote each day? And do you do you know if there's a limit on the days or, or times? I you get think there might be a limit. I'll have an answer for you tomorrow. Okay. I would say try it, but I have a feeling that the fact that they get your info that it recorded your vote already. So I'm pretty sure that if you go back on there, it's going to have you log on because you had to log in there mm -hmm. and it recorded your vote already. So I think it's okay. a one time vote, I think, so, mm -hmm. which is fun. I don't mind those. Though. Make I'd multiple have... accounts and vote as many times as possible. <laughs> well, or, or do that. Yeah. Do that. Choose another email. But yes. that's up to you, though. I, 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 you know, I appreciate the one vote and that means a lot. So. Um, yes, okay, does. good. Yes, excited on that. You know, we talk every week that Cody Maurice Dolget is a life coach. Oh, and me? yeah, one of his many talents. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just going to take my glasses off for this segment because I don't have to read so anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cody, you know, I know this is a time you're trying to get a few, you have a couple slots open. I but do. tell everybody about like, you know, what you love about life coaching and what you specialize in. So I am an ontological coach and I mainly work with an ontological <laughs> ontological coaching is basically you find the answers for yourself and I am just a mirror for you. I help help you reflect and keep you accountable for the things that you said that you put forth. So any goals that you have and any any uh, things that you put in place to help yourself, like uh, things that any actions that you want to actually get into and and 
make sure that you do daily or weekly. I make sure that you, when we talk, we discuss it. And I say, did you do your, did you do your daily meditation today, Steve? And you tell so me yes if, or no. Well, let me ask you this. What if I was a little uncertain on some of the area, like I was really frustrated with my job. Let's just okay. say, for example, and I knew I don't, I do not want to be an accountant anymore. I'm just, okay. but I don't know what I exactly want to do. Can you help me pull out some tr things yeah. that I might be good at to at least start on a path to oh, yeah. my That's new life? For, for self-discovery. Oh, yeah, definitely. I can definitely do that. I work with people from all walks of life. I work with lawyers, artists, all types of people. And, but mainly I work with gay men that want to build and sustain healthy relationships uh, and more fulfilling relationships with their family and friends and potentially lovers. So I just go to CodyDoggett.com or hit me up on Instagram at KMD Coaching, like we say every single week. And I have three stops slots available. So just reach out to me and we'll, we'll set something up. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Well, that's Thank great. You. Good. All right. Perfect. Well, let's get into a show. We've got a full show ahead of you don't we but i want to start off with some responses because tuesday's show was jam-packed with jeremy cody and myself oh yeah and i always love it when people talk back to the show and give their opinions well one of the things we were talking about was gay pride and remember cody we were talking about uh, there's an, a conservative wave coming through that says people should not be dressed skimpy in in skin tight clothing mm -hmm. and showing yep. too much and and you know on and on and on and we said ultimately is there this conservative wave coming through that's yeah. going through the entire country but are we now seeing it in our pride we had a lot of opinions we'll let you listen to episode 357 oh. on your own but um jock jaqua williams on youtube mm -hmm. who watches okay. us on youtube i love I that yeah. said they should have all the adult stuff later in the evening and oh. family and family stuff early in the day well i actually agree with that in some ways and i think in general that's kind of the way gay pride does work in I other words so. if you go in the afternoon gay pride doesn't even start till what noon i think noon. yeah yeah dykes on bikes time i get up <laughs> yeah <laughs> dykes on bikes doesn't hit the road till noon i believe so they're already like late enough and i think that early afternoon in general is fairly um good mm -hmm. oh sorry the hacker so the hacker is now reaching me sorry no sidebar. way on Currently? my personal guy. Yeah, and i'm i'm catfishing him now and i'm just i want to see how far i can go with this yeah, no, I'm playing the game back, honey. Uh-uh. Girl, get on. You will not get me. You might get me once, but not twice. But <laughs> so I'm playing the game. But we'll do that after I get off the show. Okay, anyways. Okay. But yeah, so I don't know. What are your thoughts on this? Because in general, it does happen that most of the adult stuff happens at night. But you'll get some adult naughty stuff during the day. I mean, who's doing naughty stuff at nine o'clock in the morning? Not, I mean, unless you're in I your mean... own... <laughs> in the streets, in the streets. I... Oh, right. <laughs> you got to put that caveat in there because in in my own bedroom, in the comfort of my own home, I don't want to be anywhere <laughs> but in the in my own bed at nine o'clock in the morning. So I'm not right. going outside to do anything lascivious or a little bit freaky in in the streets during the daytime so i can see how that's a point and i think that it already happens like you said so good point blake says in la i know they have blocked off areas at the festival for adult stuff oh okay. oh that's a good idea you know la is kind of on point these days with pride i just got an email today that christina aguilera is open to like performing and how we fabulous would that be i know i, I don't know christina <laughs> i know you She's do one of my favorites that yeah voice, uh, i saw in concert and several times and every time is amazing but i like this idea of blocking off areas for adult stuff to happen at the festival and yeah i think that makes sense right like oh, yeah. a dark a dark room for the daytime <laughs> 
<laughs> a day dark room. <laughs> yeah. A day alley. Yes, that sounds good to me. No, no kids allowed. I wonder. I wonder what the signage is for. <laughs> with the I can room. only imagine. <laughs> I was only. I can only imagine. Oh, well, we were had some other hot topics on Tuesday's show, episode three hundred and fifty-seven, and one of them had to do with when you bring somebody home and catching feelings so mm -hmm. I, like the one night stand deal and we all kind of said that we kind of jeremy and i have cat can catch feelings so i was saying on the show you too <laughs> and sinfully good on my I private that. instagram i am underscore stevie said i listened to today's episode and i heard your conversation about hookups and guys staying over catching feelings it made me think is hookups sleeping over a normal thing in my 23 years of effing okay. i have never had sorry facebook here we're on facebook joe <laughs> in my 23 years of having some fun i have never had someone sleep at my place or, or me at theirs i guess for me it's always been more of a safety thing i would be laying in bed all night with one eye open oh okay <laughs> don't sleep sleeping with the me. this motherfucker might be crazy and i'm not about to end up on cnn oh no not <laughs> thank you sinfully that's really hilarious that and is very funny yeah um no, I have. Uh, see, yes. maybe that's the problem. Is that <laughs> I've met the I person. Sleep over way too much. Yeah, I don't think I would like. There's since COVID and since my ankle broken and since mm -hmm. I'm getting back into the game, I don't think I will be doing that anymore. I think I'll meet somebody, and if they're really interested, then I'll say, well, "Let's meet up after." Oh, yeah. You know, like I might join you, Cody, this week to go see the finale of Drag Race. And if I meet, let's so just excited. say I meet somebody. I mean, I doubt I'll meet somebody there, but you know. I'll, I'll pull them out the audience for you. I'll be like, my friend. Friend. <laughs> But I will not go home with them then because okay. I just think I'll, I'd will i rather I'll have them do- them go home with you. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> no. Yeah. What are the people saying, Cody? The people are saying, uh, Blake has only ever slept over back in the day when he drank and would go home with someone after the bar. Sober, he doesn't want to go home with anybody. And El Rey uh, just giggled at that. And I think that, or maybe he giggled at something we said. Um, I think that that's true. That was when I, whenever I would go out and drink and I would go home with somebody, I would definitely have to spend the night. But there have been times when I've gone on dates and I would go home with somebody and I would just feel so comfortable in their bed that I stayed for so long. And it, it sounds a little bit like to catch a predator, like uh, <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it now. <laughs> but, but like, here's but the I'm thing. saying and nothing ever happened to me. Well, here's, the th here's an alert thing that I think, you know, half the time here in places like New York where the bars mm -hmm. stay open until 4 a.m., mm -hmm. oftentimes you're having a great time. It's the drinking that Blake says. So you might be staying till that 4 You might stay till the sidewalk sale that happens oftentimes at the tail end. Oh. And you might get so if you're going and you meet somebody at the tail oh, end on the sidewalk, there's a sale. Say, there's a sale. <laughs> yeah, you can get some great deals, honey. Oh, oh girl, that's what I, I love that's, it. Yeah, I've been known to go to those kind of. I don't go to the Target and all that, but I've been to the sidewalk sale <laughs> one too many times. Damn it! And I'm done with the sidewalk sale. I'm, it's high end from here on out. All right, <laughs> nothing but Neiman Marcus only. Yeah, Saks Fifth <laughs> Avenue, honey. But so that's the problem: is that you're already going, to, you're already drunk for, or you know, sloshed a little bit, uh -huh. and it's already four a.m. So now you're getting to their place at what, 4.30? Yes. Or 4.15 if they live down the street, in uh -huh. the case of my place. Okay. And so now we're starting everything at 4.15. We're wrapping up around 5.30. And am I going to kick somebody out at 5.30 in the morning? 
No. Um, and is the bus still running is what I want. <laughs> <laughs> and I've had people say that too. So it's just sometimes to in response to sinfully good who messaged me, sometimes it's like, well, you know what, just crash. Right. And then, yeah. but then of course they're there in the morning and they're sleeping in with you because they've also drank as much. And now you're offering them your French press coffee you know, the good coffee, and you start to talk about life. So you Aww. it's just this whole thing. Making them French yeah. toast, which I have done before. <laughs> now <Exactly>. get out. <laughs> yeah, right. So you had your French toast, now get out. <laughs> um, what's Teddy saying before we move on? Because we gotta Teddy move on. Says, some cities you had no options back in the day, but stay over because the trains would stop. So that's a that's a big thing, especially in London, because they stop at I think the tube. Two o'clock. The tube, yes. <laughs> 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 and then so and it doesn't reopen again until like six o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning, or something the like tube. that. The so. tube. This tube. Um he also <laughs> says DC back in the day. So his <laughs> <laughs> and then he says, I already texted him, Teddy. He says, lock that room. <laughs> I locked it. I locked it. Done. Deal. Insider joke. Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> okay. You know, this caught my attention for sure. We were going to talk about this the other day. Uh, but social media right now, the New York Post had this really interesting that young people, and I'm talking mm-hmm. Generation Z, y'all, G- no, not you. <laughs> Gen Z. That Zoomers are ne- are known to be glued to their phones, but some twenty somethings are taking a stand against all consuming apps such as TikTok and Instagram, calling them toxic and obsessive. Okay. These young people say they're regaining control of their time by stepping away from the scroll. You're reclaiming my time. They're, okay, yeah. <laughs> What's her name? Yeah. Auntie Maxine. Yes, thank you. Maxine Waters. That's and the it. anti-app wave seems to be catching on. New research reveals that Instagram is losing its grip on the next generation, according to a recent survey commissioned by the investment bank Piper Sandler. Okay. Citing only 20 per- two, 22% of respondents between 7 and 22 named Meta's popular photo sharing platform as their favorite app down from 31% of spring of 2020. When you delete it, somebody wrote, you realize you don't need it. 20-year-old yeah. Gabriella Steinman told The Post, the economics major dumped both Instagram and TikTok in 2019 and said the relief she felt after unplugging was almost immediate. This is really surprising to me because mm-hmm. I think we always thought, maybe it's your generation, actually. Aren't you? I'm a, <laughs> an, I'm j- X. Marx, Madam X, Gen oh, yeah? X. Is that what yeah. you mean? I'm a millennial. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I think it's all your generation that's all into it. And after being hacked, Barely I'm really into it. Yeah. <laughs> but I have to tell you that, you know, just to bring it a little more <clears throat> real into why to keep things in perspective. So if you're scrolling and scrolling away Mm -hmm. and everyone's trying to get back in shape for spring, summer bod, um, I, there's this great get out magazine. I'm showing the picture through the, the (laughs) so it's got this great hot cover boy called John tree. I, maybe you can spell this J H O N T R I. Yes. You know how they always love to come up with interesting versions of and they names. Sure do. John yeah. Tree, he goes by. <laughs> and when asked, but when asked, how often do you exercise and what does your training consist of? He a- answers the question, my w- workouts are two hours minimum every what? day. It consists of strength and resistance training and cardio ovations he writes but honestly there's very little added cardio to my workouts when i have catwalks or photos these three days before i add it to my training plan and it's at the end of the two hours of weight training and this is the body that you get when two hours every single day wow so i mean i say this and i show this as as we're talking about 
social media and uh-huh. why people might get off is I think sometimes you can get in a rut of looking and scrolling and like, oh my God, I don't look as good as this person and comparing yourself. Well, just to, he's a, uh, John Tree is a go-go dancer that works several nights a week and is a personal mm-hmm. trainer. That is the life of a personal trainer and a dancer. So this is his life and what he does. When does he sleep? I mean, but I don't, you know, I'm not going to do to get that body if that's what it takes. I I like a good 45 hour, six days a week. And to me, that's like good post. Yeah. Post. That's amazing. Ankle. Six days a week? That's yeah, really, but like really four, good. But I'm like 45. I mean, the fact that he's doing two hours. I mean, do you, can you spend two hours in the gym? Do you I even want not. to? I do an hour and a half at max. What, bitch? Okay. I do. Have you seen this body, honey? It, what, is Marie, it all like... <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing for 90 minutes in the gym? Working out. Working on my fitness. Dancing a little working bit. On your, <laughs> working that mouth of yours, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah but i i can see what you're saying Be- being comparing yourself to other people on instagram is a is a thing and it's something that a lot of people go through but i feel like instagram and other social media outlets there's a way to do it help with with mental your mental health in your mindset because if you do it and you don't compare yourself to others or you notice that you're comparing yourself to others and you stop that that in uh, before it actually becomes a detriment to your mental health, then it's something that can be utilized to make you more apt to go to the gym or more apt to do things that are more positive for your mental outlook. That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I, we've definitely been, you know, you can get in the rabbit hole as many people call it. Um, well, what do you think about the fact that Gen Zers and a younger audience, because it's one thing for my generation and then some older generations to be like, well, we didn't really, it's not kind of our thing. Like, truth be told, it's interesting that we got hacked for, mm-hmm. I, I use social media mostly for the show. Mm-hmm. I'm, I don't really spend any time scrolling at all. I, I, but I think part of it is because of my generation. I just think I, I'm, I love to connect with people in person and I don't want to get, I don't like it that much. So yeah. what do you think it is? Do you think that because social media is so new, I think this is one of my theories. Mm-hmm. It's new in the fact that we're seeing some changes. There was a story today about Netflix that it's lost all this money that stocks plummeted yeah. and, I, do you think that we're seeing the after effects of a tech generation that is in kind of a tumultuous turning of time that maybe we're realizing that some of this stuff we don't need we don't as need. much? We don't need yeah. every single platform that is out there to be streaming every single thing. We don't. Oh, Did you tell that for me? Did you? <laughs> what I, I have what every I, single stream. What platform. I need is your password <laughs> to get into it. Is what I need. You know, all star starts in a, in a minute, right? I need you your know. pair. I need your Paramount <laughs> password because it somehow lapsed and I don't have access to it anymore. Damn it! So can I please get that? Yes, darling. Yes, of course you can have it. And I think that that's it's one hundred percent correct. I think that when it's something we didn't have back in the day so we survived we made it and we might even be more health uh, our mental health might be better because we didn't have it when we were younger so i i say that i applaud them for taking a break for from it when they see that it is affecting them in a way that is not good for their mental health so good job gen zers even though i'm not one of you (laughs) (laughs) yes okay well we've got to move on to this hot topic story that really caught my attention essentially the grabby awards there's a grabby awards here in the states and there's grabby awards europe europa as i like to call it (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) you know i'm practically european but uh, essentially um are you looking so they wrote on their twitter account account are you looking to party or play Mm -hmm. they're hosting the grabbies like a party so 
essentially the uh the adult bookshop owners formerly known as the prowlers are putting on they're calling it these shit shows according to this article in straight up uh -huh. gay porn uh -huh. and one is in spain this weekend with reportedly taking place outside of a hotel swimming pool with host Chi Chi LaRue. Oh. But before the awards are tossed out, the grabbies are promoting their pre-parties and they're asking if they're looking to party or play at the events as seen in the above tweet, the one that I said about party and play. Mm -hmm. um, so when it was posted over a dozen times this month, party and play, of course, usually refers to drug-fueled sex parties or chem sex. Oh, yeah. And often deadly or at least severely damaged as to one's health, according to Straight Up Gay Porn, it's remarkable that the grabbies would use PNP to advertise their parties. But I guess desperate times call for desperate measures. They, they write, what's truly disturbing is that they place Chi Chi LaRue, a well-known recovering addict, on their flyers. Mm -hmm. Regardless of what anyone thinks of LaRue, even if she deserves better than this, and it's this is this disrespectful both to her and so many in the adult industry who are struggling with addiction? That's a question, Cody. Uh, what's okay. your thoughts? I think, well, I do not feel like Chi Chi should be on the flyer for multiple reasons and one of them is because of uh, of their uh, admitted addiction so yes especially when you put it in, into that context of party and play everybody knows what that means i know they did it for shock value so so, so they get some press like we're talking about it now so i think that it it drew people in and it did what it what it had to do but bringing Chi Chi in, it what that wasn't cool. It wasn't right. And I think also, if I can just go off on a little soapbox, Chi Chi LaRue is has been accused of being of sexually harassing someone. And I think that is another reason that she should not be on that flyer. So so I hear you, and it's interesting when you read the tweet. So if the the actual flyer, mm -hmm. um, when they write it, doesn't say anything about PNP. In fact, it says Twinktastic Party slash Fetish Cruise. It lists mm -hmm. the sponsors. It lists the date. It lists the official Grabby Awards and where to go and all that good stuff. So that alone doesn't do anything harm. It's that the Grabby Awards then took it among amongst themselves mm -hmm. to write are you looking to party or play they didn't put pnp which is the acronym that when you go on to grinder or scrap and you see pnp craigslist. we know okay craigslist <laughs> we know what they're talking about they're talking about specifically party drugs drug fueled parties yeah so but so do you think that we're being a little hard on them because they didn't really say it? Or do you think that they knew what they were doing and they're kind of doing a wink and a nod to those that might yes. be inclined to PNP it? Look, I've, I've, I've PNP it before. <laughs> penis and penis. I've penis uh -huh. and penis it before. Um, so I can't be really that judgmental as far as that. And I feel like they only did it in order to kind of get attention and that that's what you do in marketing but is this that's okay but right but is this the right attention to be drawing to yourself i get it we are coming off of three almost, what is it three years now mm -hmm. of of no major parties many of these people make their living off of this kind of uh, party planning mm -hmm. major events that they haven't been able to do that they haven't been getting a paycheck so but also, devil's advocate here, okay. many people have resorted to their vices, whether it's alcohol or mm -hmm. drugs. And so is it really a time, you know, I just came off of, of I'm on, I have one more episode of Euphoria season two. Oh and my it God, is I going deep. It. <laughs> it's, it's deep. And it's, but it's all about not glamorizing and showing some of the realities of drug addiction and what it does not only to the person 
who's consumed by the drugs, but the families and the friends and everybody else yes. in between. And so coming off of COVID, is this really the messaging that you want to put out there when people are struggling, not only within the adult industry, but just in general, to kind of come to our party? Or mm -hmm. like, did they really need to put that tweet out there that wasn't even on the flyer that's going to be a trigger for many people? Like, hmm, oh, huh. Well, you know what? what? I get what you're saying, but I don't see the harm of it. Maybe because I'm coming from a vantage point of where I've learned to actually do those things responsibly and without being a hindrance to other people. Like I've, I just, I've only done that at a party or in in times of celebration. Maybe if I had the mindset of of someone who comes from an ad addictive place, then I would have a completely different view viewpoint on it but right now this this i can only speak from my personal experience yes but yours is different from i think that pnp often has to do with drugs like meth and drugs uh, that are oh, really no, never, have been destructive yeah. to a lot of people's lives is that what and it means because i thought it was uh, uh pills and pills and party or something like that i thought it was that what did I say before? You said pills and poppers. Pills and poppers. That's what I thought it stood for. I always thought it meant like chem sex because there's a story that we could talk about, Ed Buck, and it was meth. Okay. All and right. The audience well, listening, what did you think? The um, audience the listening yeah. is, Blake is completely against me. <laughs> Party and play is hardcore, not even weed. Yeah, oh, hardcore okay. meth. Anybody else want to weigh in? Everybody is saying that it's meth. It's party and play. Well, then in that instance, then I think Which is that what they went, the, they everybody went a, else... They went a bit too far. Okay. Now meth. That I, Damon now that says I, meth. Okay. All right, y'all. Damn. Well, come on now. We, we're looking out for the people here. No, and I appreciate that. And I think, I'm not... I don't know everything, so... Well, I, you know, we could talk about this real... I mean, Ed Bach, who is a serial killer essentially of gay black sex workers mm -hmm. who's just sentenced to 30 years in a federal prison because he he lured young black men who were often experiencing homelessness addiction yeah. poverty to his apartment and for sexually charged sessions in which he would he would inject them yeah. with methamphetamine and and drug them with sedatives with and without their consent Federal prosecutors said have huge sentencing memorandums on this. He solicited his victims in various ways, including using social media platforms. Here we go with social media. Dating, escort websites, referrals, and so on. Sentenced to 30 years. So now do you feel the same way, Cody, that... Do not. I'm, I'm, now that I've been educated, now I understand more. That man is, everybody's saying he's the devil, and I completely agree. I think that he's not going to last long in jail because the people are going to probably murder him in, in jail. And I think that it's, I'm glad that he's finally getting his just desserts as far as him getting, getting sentenced to jail. So. You know, there's a really great documentary, too, that everybody could watch. It's Jamel... Um, let me just Gerard see if I can... Carmichael. Not that one, no. no. Oh, um, okay. Um, that is really overview of what happened in it. I'm just oh, trying... really? Oh, I would like yeah. to watch that after. Yeah. Oh, Jamel and Tim. Okay. G-E-M-M-E-L. -M -M -E Jamel and Tim is mm -hmm. the doc... Um, Jamel and... and Tim is the documentary. It's really, really eye-opening about more not ed buck but what th the victims of it but giving them their story and really telling it and the fight to get this ed buck really where we're at now is 30 years in prisons which thank god but it's, i highly recommend watching that film it's really good um there was another thing i was going to talk that essentially of that same thing i'm losing my train of thought but the no, was I think we're good. Oh, no. We're good. Okay, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Okay. Was it <laughs> was it the gay dads? 
Um, looking at um, Jamel and Tim, l- look that up on Google. I okay. forget where I watched it. I, I would it- look it up. I would look it up right now. I'll post it on tagspodcast.com. I just got to get to the next story. Cody, would you, are we doing hot topics today? Let's just continue Only- with hot topics. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And But here's a update that I want to give everybody. Uh, next Tuesday... April 26th at 9 p.m. Eastern time, we are doing our second deeper conversation where our Patreon community uh, at the subcategory and above uh, are having these really great hour-long conversations. We did it last month, and we have some really deeper conversations. We set a topic, but we also do a round robin, and it's really connect with everybody it's really a great chance to have a little bit deeper and uh, interesting conversation than we can always have, say, on Tags Podcast and Tags Live. It's mm-hmm. next Tuesday, April 26, 9 p.m. Eastern time on our deeper Discord channel. The best way to get to it, if you're interested, is join our Patreon community by going to patreon.com forward slash tags podcast patreon.com forward slash tags podcast grab a tier i think i'm doing a special if you grab it at the it's the um the second category not the virgin category it's the second tier and above and you can join our conversation it was the subcategory it's the one below it's the virgin category and above no sorry the twink category and ah, above i'm gonna edit that yeah, yeah yeah there you go cool and join us it's gonna be really good wait. we're gonna talk we're gonna have a whole kiki darling yes somebody just mentioned rathaniel yes who mentioned that i that's remember i brought good... it up because yeah. well and that's everybody a gr- was commenting on it how amazing oh, it is it's so good yeah that's i'm gonna watch it from before Jam- tuesday jamel and tim is a documentary about ed buck and, and i don't Ma- see where Matt. it's showing so i maybe it's are you sure and you're spelling g g-e-m-m-e-l and tim. and tim yes you're not seeing anything it just i mean i see it but it doesn't show where it is it's actually stream- streaming we'll look that up and, and find we'll it post it yeah because yeah, i forget how i saw it um jamel g-e-m-m-e-l and but oh, teddy says she saw it at outfest it, that they've they've not sold it yet okay it's- he doesn't see it on um, IMDb. Okay, so or maybe it's not out yet. Yeah. In the meantime, though, guys, I really highly re- Gerard, Gerard Carmichael, and that's yes, J A Gerard Carmichael's Rathaniel. Yes. one man show is amazing on HBO, HBO Max. Highly recommend that. It's so good. Okay. Moving on. So we are doing just hot topics. Just correct? hot topics. Okay. Yes, so I've yes. got to move on to those really quickly to find out where we left off. Are we doing Batman? I'm going to let you pick. Okay. So apparently Batman's gay, Cody. What's going on? <laughs> and yes. I was, <laughs> I've known Bat, this for years, darling. <laughs> Bat fans on Twitter released a collective gasp on Wednesday as they learned that the voice actor kevin conroy is gay conroy is best known for voicing batman in a series of dc animated series and films over the past 30 years beginning with batman the animated series the realization came as dc comics announced the creative minds behind this year's pride anthology a series of stories penned by a high profile lgbtq authors and drawn by famous queer artists centered around the label's lgbtq characters Conroy will write the story Finding Batman, described as a personal story. Details on the tale itself remain mum, though judging by the title, he'll revisit its most iconic character in some way. The full anthology releases May 31st. So it's really the guy that played him. Yeah, in the not... animated series. Yeah. So this is a lot of there. a hula baloo. I mean, in my mind, Batman is really gay and the Batcave is just a big glory hole. But but I guess not canonically, that's not how it is how it is. So you told me something <laughs> offline though that was kind of interesting that uh-huh. you're not really even into Batman because uh, you said he's a little highbrow. Why for you don't call me out? Why because you... <laughs> that's what I do, motherfucker. <laughs> no, I don't like like the rich guys. I like 
these street level heroes or the ones that are too so powerful that like Superman or Wonder Woman or the, any of the X-Men. But Batman, I mean, he's pretty amazing. He's really smart, but he doesn't have any superpowers. So I don't know. He's not my favorite. Him and Well, then I'm wondering if you're going to like Man. what I, I'm writing a, a book right now. Uh -huh. It's called Leather Knight, K-N-I-G-H-T, Leather Knight. I think you'll like him because he's not going to be totally rich, but he's not going to be poor either. Okay. Well, see, that, that means I'll but like him. Maybe. Does he, have, does he do like, what's his powers? Nothing that's like... I mean, he. I'll tell you later. I don't want to give away too much. Oh, right okay. Now. Yeah, don't tell the kids. Just yeah. tell me. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I okay. think you will. I hope I know you do. I will. I, anything you write, darling, I know I love. What are the kids saying? Um, no. Oh, Steve, do you know Bette Midler's song "My Night in Black Leather"? Ooh, the ultimate in camp. I like. No, I don't. I'm gonna have to check that out. 1979. We are talking about 1976 at the moment. So, and I'm all about 70s music from her album Thighs and Whispers. I love the talk back audience. <laughs> Me too. Thanks so for the fun. Comments, we learned guys. so much. I know. Right? right? I learned what PNP finally stands. Oh my God. That's <laughs> nuts. 90 years. I finally learned. <laughs> yes. I don't know. Maybe I'm just innocent. I don't know. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Cody, what topic do you want to talk about next? We talked about Sherry Pie, or did we not? We have not talked about Sherry Pie yet. Do you want to go Sherry yes, Pie? Yes, Sherry Pie, and then do because we can always come back to those other two. Okay, another Disgraced week. Graced Queen Sherry Pie makes her return to drag two years after the scandal, but really. We all know Sherry Pie, the second queen in RuPaul's Drag Race history to be disqualified on the show, mm -hmm. seems to be making her return to drag after reports surfaced that Pie corresponded with at least eight uh, with at least eight up and coming actors. She convinced them to send photos and videos, sometimes sexual in nature, as well yep. as take steroids, take steroids under the fake name of Allison Mossy. Mm -hmm. The competitor was disqualified and practically edited out of season 12 of the show, which was really fun to watch because when you knew the story and you're like, wait, I see her in the background. <laughs> <laughs> but they you didn't give her any airtime. Yeah, those <laughs> good ed good good editors. The <laughs> announcement by VH1 ahead of Pi's on-screen debut marked the first time that a competitor in a franchise history was disqualified before their workroom entrance. Mm -hmm. Pi was not allowed to appear at the reunion or compete in the finale, and she was doing good, Cody. Right? She was like, at oh yeah, doing I really great. She could have actually won, in my opinion, if not for this scandal. So talk about catfishing, though, and what she really did and luring guys, straight, gay, whatever they were, as at, fronting as a casting director and yeah. having them do all these lascivious acts yeah. that they didn't want to do. And I know from experience, when you're trying to get it, get out there as an actor, yeah it's you're very vulnerable and you could fall prey to someone like this person, which oh, Sherry yeah. Pye did. So the question being is, should Sherry be allowed to come back? She said she knows some of, she understands that people won't agree with what she did, but she's coming back to social media. Should she be allowed to come back to social media is the question. So part of me thinks everyone deserves a second chance, but I said it the other week when we talked about Jesse Smollett, and I will say it again. If you do something that lascivious or you do something that in the court of public opinion, it makes you basically a pariah because she got canceled, Jesse got canceled. And I say I can't support anything that they do from here on out. She yeah. Sherry, go do something else. Stay off social media and li continue to live your life. And I I mean, like, I don't wish any ill on you, but I don't think that you should be. <laughs> you should be <laughs> Damon, why'd you do that to me? I was making a really good point. And, and you put juicy Cody. stuff in, in, the, in the comments. Well, you can't look down at the comments when you you're trying to not. make up. On I this show, when you're making a point, you do not look down at the comments. You laugh. And then I was like, what is he laughing at? <laughs> don't look at the comments when you're trying to make a point. Yes. So 
I just can't support anything that either one of them do. And I think that they should just go somewhere and lay low and just live their lives because the things that they did were very harmful to other people. So, yeah. Does Matt Lauer get to come back from yeah. the no. Today Show? No. Who's heard from him? Um, I think, are you canceled for life? I don't know. The fact is, it hasn't been really enough time, I think. And for all those victims that suffered, it's kind of a slap in the face to think that you can kind of come back. If I, if I we're being hacked and not being allowed to even get, for doing nothing wrong and can't seem to get back on our account, why would we assume that social media platforms would then monitor, oh, right, well, Sherry Pie did all this on RuPaul's Drag Race, so let's not let her back on. No, they're not going to do that. So it's really up to her, Sherry mm -hmm. Pie, and her posting that somewhat, I don't know, apologetic or not. I know some of you are going to. It was. There's it some, the thing is, it's just a little tone deaf, too, because okay. I think that there's so many excellent drag queens coming out. I mean, Season on and on. on i know right and <laughs> and there's there can the only be season <laughs> there can only be one winner yeah so but all of them are so talented they're all going to do great things are we really going to support this one person when there's umpteen of them out there now that you could go see do you want to support this one that really was did such distraught to our community i yeah. think the answer is no and like you said you know, show maybe what you did. She didn't show anything about how she learned from it. In I think some of the posts should really be her as a guy um, and saying, here's what I'm doing to regain your support. Here's how I'm learning. Here's what I did in my off time. I, I sought therapy. I, you know, I did stuff. It's just all about going back to the art form that, you know, she was a part of yeah. that. I don't think we all are here for it. Be a part of the healing and don't be, don't try and, and search for fame. So I, I the, think, yeah, I think, but that, on the, go ahead. Go what are you going to say? Well, one of our viewers right now, El Ray says, let her come back and see if she can survive. Uh -uh. Well, good. That's a good point. <laughs> you know, I mean, cancel culture is, it's, it, in the end, it's really up to the people. Everything is about, you know, you'll either survive or you won't survive. And why not let her? I'm not going to go to any show that she's ever going to be at or follow yeah. her. I'm not that big of a, I'm not following that many of them anyway. But will you, because you're a huge fan, will yeah. you follow her or go to a show oh, that she's? No, I'm very selective about the queens that I follow and I have unfollowed. Queens for less. Let's just say that. Okay. <laughs> I hear ya. Blake says she should she should start a new persona and be banana pudding instead. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yes. Anybody else saying anything before we move on to our final topic? Just Teddy saying thank you for the follow. And Damon said he has a friend who criminally misbehaved online, and after probation, he did it to <gasps> he did it to Damon. So uh, I think that yeah, he should they should just lay 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 low and not really try to seek fame because why are they? What are their motivations for trying to seek the fame? I'm so sorry, Damon, that that happened to you. Yeah, right. Oh. Well, moving on to our final topic, our favorite thirst trap, uh, thirst trap Thursday. When this comes out, we put together by straight up gay porn, a list this week of 19, I think it's 19. Is it Cody? Mm. 19 gay porn stars. And they asked the question who took the best photo or video of yep, the 19. week. This is a really good week and was a hard one for me. Starting with the first one, junior, I'll post this on tagspodcast.com. Um, I think I will start and okay. go with my favorite one. It's midway through the list when you guys look at this on, if you're listening to this, when this show comes out. And it's mm -hmm. by a guy by 
he goes by Stoner Twink. What kind of name is that, by the way? You know what? Okay. I'm not. There's so many dualities about this guy. Uh -huh. First of all, he must have an old soul because he's going by Stoner Twink, which mm -hmm. um, today is 420, by the way. Oh, yeah. Happy 420. When we record this, 420. So he's right on brand. brand. That's why I also <laughs> picked him. Uh huh. His leg, his quad he's got a great quad as he's sitting in a chair looking in the mirror taking a selfie he's got a tattoo of snoopy sitting on the 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 dog house okay laying up looking up in the into the stars i Aww. mean he the fact that he loves snoopies and peanuts commercial is amazing snoopy um, and penis yeah <laughs> his ball sack is so Full. He must have either taken a shower and relaxed it, like I told you to do with Manscaped and say, and we save balls. When mm -hmm. you take a shower, your ball sack's that much more relaxed. It's so like full. Next up, he's cute. He's got a great face. He's lounged back, great body. But the best part in the background, this is why he's an old soul because of the Snoopy, is this Donna Summer album. Yes. That what? I have the same album. It's so cute. I was like, you have what? Oh my goodness. And <laughs> because when Cody and I were doing this offline earlier, I was like, Cody, oh my God, I think I have that Donna Summer album. And anything like Donna Summer to me, she was this. I mean, look at this cover, y'all. She's in the clouds. She's got a bow on. Oh, she God. is feel. It's 1976, honey. <laughs> to me, this would have been the. I would have been all about this. You know, you love an album back in the day when the first song, Side One, was 18 mm -hmm. minutes. The first track is 18 <laughs> minutes long. And they're like, that's it. We're done. Yeah. Flip it over. <laughs> Flip it over. What? Then what, you've what got. What do they do for 18 minutes? Lord. It's one song and it's comprised <laughs> of three. And I'm not mad. Georgia Marauder, honey. And Side Two's got um four tracks and that's it they're done we're like yes, right. they got out of the studio and they went to the club and they were like we made an album yeah so he gets my vote because of that i'm so okay. excited but i could go over all my donna collection which i pulled out but i won't waste your time i but love it i'll come over and we'll, we'll have, we'll have a donna in. summer party oh my god i live for donna summer live oh my god <laughs> well my choice goes to and you called it by the way it was the first one you were like that's the one for you cody and i oh, said yeah. yes junior is the one for me <laughs> his ass is just too amazing to ignore and i went it's like salute it it's uh, it's just so perky and round and bubbly and and beautiful. And I went to his Twitter like you taught me, and his Twitter is so hot. All That's right? the thing you yes. go, you do a little research you on these, and go. you go to their Twitter accounts, which they're all linked up, and then you're like, oh, okay, now there were yeah. some really good ones on there too on their Twitter yes. accounts that were hot. Oh yeah. And so in this picture, he's standing on a beach. He's completely naked with a, just a baseball hat and some sunglasses on. And he's turned away from the camera looking at the, I think it's, I think it's the ocean, but I can't really tell because all I can see is ass. I mean, there could be anything there, it, but this ass is just eclipsing it because it's so big and beautiful. It's really and, well and shot right. too. It's like kind of at an angle and the lighting is amazing on the beach it's delicious. Oh, was was there what there was something else other than his ass in the picture? I I really honestly haven't noticed. It's just <laughs> it's just all ass. Donna Summer is there too. Yep, she. Is. <laughs> Everything's just grander with Donna. What are people saying? People are saying they love Donna Summer. Okay. And uh, Blake is is asking, is he on the list this week? And I said, yes, he's on there twice. I saw him. And what Teddy's, list? <laughs> the, 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 Are we throwing the, a party? I, no, the <laughs> the the thirst trap list. Oh, I thought. Oh, right. Put 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 him on the list. We forgot to he, put him on the list. <laughs> <laughs> what party are we throwing? I mean, it's at your house, so I oh, hope you're okay. expecting us. <laughs> Wrap so, it up. We got a okay, minute. Okay, okay. So Teddy says Lydian is is his favorite, and 
party on a love song. Um, Damon says. Oh. And there's a song called Wasted on the album. They're talking about the album and they're oh. talking about the thirst trap. Kylan Kiddo is Yes, Wasted, track three, side two. Is it good? I can't remember it. So I'm gonna play it after. Okay, all right. I am so excited. Blake says his choice is Kylan Kiddo, the way the dick is dancing in the video. And James says Xtian, I think it's Christian Mingle for me, for him. Uh, outdoors, plants, and a mustache. He is in. I also very much enjoyed Christian Mingle. Um, but yeah, now they're just commenting on the Donna Summer album. That well, Donna and I <laughs> give a fair. <laughs> we want to thank you again. My our our tags podcast currently is hacked, so follow us on tags podcast at I am underscore Steve V. For the time being, I will give you updates when we're not hacked. Mm-hmm. I am underscore Steve V. Follow Cody at Mr. Maurice, yep. or he is a life coach at KMD Coaching. And just listen to Donna Summer. I mean, it'll bring yeah. you a lot of happiness. That's right. And Last in the, mean- dance. La- oh. ah. and yes, in the meantime, okay. continue having hot gay, gay sex. sex. Yes. Yes, honey.